Yeah, so now I'm stuck as Wednesday Adams in Barbie Vale. <laughs> Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and of course we're starting off with another weekly vlog. The last week of 2022. Exciting times. I don't have loads planned. I do have one book that I'm in the middle of which I mentioned last week that I would like to finish so that I don't go into the new year with carrying over a book from December but we'll see because I am also feeling like do I just give myself a mood read week? which could be fun. But the book I'm in the middle of is Wakenhurst by Michelle Paver. I talked about this last week with the full intention that I was going to finish this and just never did. This one is a historical thriller gothic book, which does sound like everything I'm going to enjoy. I started this during my 24 hour readathon and I liked the start of this. The very start is done in letter and newspaper formats. I really enjoyed that. It was really intriguing, really gripping, really set up some of the intrigue that's going on in this story. And then it actually gets into chapter one and we're following Maud and we're seeing her as she grows up. I liked it, but it was very, very slow. I am hoping that it picks up now because where I left it during that return of our readathon. We are on chapter 15, page 132, and this picture has just been found by Maud's father. And it's from this point where on the synopsis and from what the newspaper articles were saying that everything started to go wrong. So I am really intrigued on that. It's just been a bit of a slow start because you're seeing Maud in society during Edwardian Suffolk, seeing how the restraints against women at that time and how it was. That sort of thing I do enjoy, but I have to be in the mood for it. And so I've kind of been putting it off ever since the 24 hour readathon just because I haven't felt like going back into it but as I say I would love to go into the new year with just a clean slate and being able to finish this one it's not there's not long left it will not take me long so I could do it which I might do this evening I might maybe read another 50 pages see how we get on and if I'm enjoying it carry on but we'll see we'll see otherwise as I said I might just mood read I'm also going to pick up another ebook because I am back to work tomorrow so I'm definitely gonna have to pick up an ebook then not 100% sure the one I read last week I really really enjoyed it was a start of a trilogy but I don't think I want to binge read the whole trilogy so I want to give myself a bit of a break so it's just debating do I go back to like a dark romance book because I have quite a few of those to choose from or I've got like a cozy book which a lot of people say if you like legends and Lattes try this one and um, so I could go with that or we've got The Cruel Prince which is a YA fantasy which I said I would never read but it's free on Kindle Unlimited so I may as well give it a try. So those are the three different picks that again I'm probably just going to mood read and just randomly click on one on my library and just be like that's the one we're going to go with and yeah that's it. I have I have no set reading plans. I don't know if I want to start my January TBR early or not. I might do because one of the books on there is chunky so maybe basically this update was to go hello welcome to the video I don't really know what I'm reading so we're just gonna go with what the mood suggests this week and I hope you enjoy it by the time this comes out it will be in 2023 so I hope you had a lovely new year's and that all went really well for you I know this time there's a lot of pressure to make a lot of new year's resolutions and goals and stuff I've fully decided not to do that because I don't like the pressure and the idea that I could fail at something like I just don't, I don't want it I don't want it. I just want to go into this new year with feeling rested, relaxed and just prioritising myself. I suppose the only resolution I'm making is that once a week I'm going to set time aside to journal and just enjoy that. Partly helping with that my mum did get me a beautiful little wax melt set which I tried out last night and I absolutely love and yeah that's that's literally the only I suppose the only resolution I have is to put myself first and to learn to relax. I do hope that if you do choose to make any new year's resolutions do it don't feel the pressure of having to commit to them and it's the same with books I'll probably do like a goal of maybe like a hundred books on Goodreads or something but with zero intention to try and force myself to meet that if I don't meet it I don't care if I go over it good but I'm not bothered but yeah so that's that's my starting off with this week we're gonna mood read I don't know exactly what yet and don't put pressure on yourself because of this new year it's so easy to do but please don't enjoy it relax give yourself a break but that's enough 
of all of that, I am meeting my partner today. He's got a meal booked. I'm not exactly sure where we're going. I am thinking, I was gonna start editing, like finish editing the vlog from last week, which will already be up, but I only have a little bit left to do on that. So I feel like I could get that done before work tomorrow morning easily. And Waterstones, they have a 50% off hardback sale on, which I don't normally go for, but there's a couple of hardbacks, which I didn't realize the paperback versions, no. Nope. They're coming out next month and um, I don't like the look of them at all. So I might just go treat myself to the hardbacks, especially as they're 50% off. So thinking I might pop out to Bromley. I was going to go up to London, but the trains aren't running yet. So I might just pop out to Bromley, have a little rummage and then meet my partner. Because he's, he's only just woken up. It is almost 11 o'clock. Okay, no, it's almost 12 o'clock and he's there laid in bed like... Yeah, I'm not ready to meet yet. So I think I might just do that, go have some fun. Unless of course he says he's gonna be ready sooner and then he'll have to come with me in central London. Regardless, we're going to Waterstones because today is the last day of that 50% sale, I think. So we're gonna have to do it today. So yeah, you come with me for that and let's see if I do get anything and what I end up reading this week. Who knows? It's just gonna be, I feel like this week's gonna be chaos, but I hope you enjoy it and I hope you're well. So yeah, see you soon soon tomorrow you're gonna see me in a few seconds but i'm gonna chat to you pro probably tomorrow morning yesterday ended up being a rather busy day but it was really really nice let me start off with the fact that i did read a bit more of wakenhurst by michelle paver i got to chapter 25 page 204 and it's okay we now have a bit of mixed media format again we are looking into maud's father's journals and seeing how his mental state is becoming more unstable since finding doom since then he's become more and more obsessed over his own sin especially as he is translating a book that he also found which follows a woman who apparently became the vessel for god and so there's a lot of heavy religious stuff in this at the same time maud has decided that she doesn't believe in god anymore that she just woke up one day and was like nope that's it I don't believe in it anymore, it doesn't make sense, I've had enough. Also starting to slowly push out against what her father's saying, she starts doing these like little petty pranks and things and you're just seeing how the family is slowly crumbling. I like the fact that we do get that mixed media, that you do get the journal entries, but it's still, it's quite a slow paced book. It is, it's just a slower book. So I think I'm just gonna keep this as like my lunchtime book. And then of course, yesterday I said I was going shopping because Waterstones had a 50% off hardback sale. It was a bit deceiving because it wasn't all of their hardbacks and it was a bit of a mess. I was gonna film a bit more, I was actually gonna a TikTok video on it. It was just messy. Like there was stuff everywhere and only the books that were stickered as 50% off were in the sale. But some of those books, like maybe the top one was stickered and the one underneath wasn't. And so you weren't 100% sure if they were part of the sale or not, because it could be that someone took that book with the sticker on it and then the other one underneath didn't have a sticker. So it was a bit of a mess, but I still managed to find a few books that I was quite happy with. So we're gonna quickly run through those. <laughs> this is a book stack that I got. It's, it's quite a lot and it's so heavy because they are all hardback. One book that isn't a hardback is Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Mir. This was $1.99, $1.99 in Forbidden Planet and that was because it's damaged. So they said souls is damaged, so $1.99 instead of $14.99. And I can honestly tell you that the damage to this book is so minimal that 
or Waterstones would sell this full price. I was shocked. Have I read the first book in this series, Gideon the Ninth? No. Do I own it? No. But I couldn't pass up the fact that this was $1.99 and I've seen so many people talk about this, especially Sylvie over at TBR Diaries. I'll have her channel linked below. She loves this series. She recently read the last book in the series, which I'm not sure what one that is actually, but she absolutely loved it. And that's got me interested in this series as a whole. Nona the Ninth. Although there's also Electo the Ninth. I'm not sure, um, but she loved it. And that's got me interested in picking it up. I also want to try more sci-fi this year. And this one is like sci-fi, but with necromancy and they're gay. So that's that's all I know about it. I kind of don't want to know, especially because the back of this is going to be the second book. So it's going to give away spoilers for the first book. Basically, I'm going to go have to get the first book, but I'm not mad about it. The fact that I got this for $1.99 is just a steal. So yeah, I don't know. I haven't read it. Let me know if you've read it and what you think but I am excited. Sylvie absolutely loves this series. I will have a channel on below. Please go check her videos out. She's a lovely, lovely person and she has non-stop talked about this book enough that when I saw it for $1.99 that I was like, okay, fine, I'll try this series and I'll blame it on Sylvie. <laughs> so that, that's what we're doing. $1.99, that was the best bargain of the day. It was so good. The Waterstones haul. We have one book that wasn't actually in the 50% off but one that I desperately wanted to get because I think I mentioned it yesterday, the paperback design for that is gross. I don't want it at all. But that's Vladimir by Julia May Jonas. This is a book I've had my eye on since it came out to be honest. It's one that I'm really intrigued by and I really liked this cover and I thought oh okay I'm gonna wait for that to come out in paperback because that looks stunning. Yeah no it's a completely different redesign so instead I got the hardback. It was a shame it wasn't in the 50% off sale but also I was gonna get it regardless so. I actually got this one with a Waterstones voucher so my dad gave me Christmas presents a couple weeks ago and I'd spent the majority of it but had £10 left so that reduced this book so I only had to pay like £4.99 for it so again I'm not complaining. And this one we're following a teacher and they're both teachers so we're following a couple they're both teachers but they also have quite an open marriage so that they are able to see others and I think the female teacher gets involved with a student. I'm not 100% sure but it sounded really intriguing to me and I've seen enough reviews of it that I really want to give it a try so there we go. Plus I really do like this colour. It's just so striking. I don't want to go massively into these because I am going to be doing a book haul and you'll probably see that shortly after this video so I won't go too much into detail. Then the half price ones. We have Juniper and Thorn and this is by Ava Reed. I picked this one up mainly because I've been seeing it around on TikTok a lot. So far TikTok's been pretty good with their book recommendations. This one is a fantasy horror. It is a retelling and we're following a young witch who seeks to discover her identity and escape the abusive father. And it's a retelling of the Juniper Tree. I've not read the Juniper Tree but obviously if I like this I will be intrigued to read The Juniper Tree to see where all of this came from. I'm intrigued, it's a retelling, I always like retellings and I do quite like a bit of horror fantasy every so often so I'm gonna give that one a try obviously because I bought it. Then we have Agatha Christie by Lucy Worsley and this is a non-fiction book all about Agatha Christie. I was really excited to pick this one up especially because it was half price because non-fiction books can be quite expensive. This was meant to be £25, the fact that I got it for £12.50 couldn't say no to that. This was the first book that I picked up while I was there. As we know, I've been starting my Agatha Christie journey and I really am making an effort to read a bit more non-fiction about authors that I'm really intrigued by. And Agatha Christie is someone that's a bit of an enigma because she went missing for 11 days and nobody knows what happened there. She's also someone that's very different apparently to the books that she wrote and like her heroine and even Hercule, Hercule Pro got work on that. It was actually Christina. Again I'll have her channel linked below that told me about this book because she knew I was interested in Agatha Christie so I'm really pleased that she told me about it and I've had my eye on this for a little while so I'm really excited that I managed to get half price. Where am I going to put all these books? I have no idea because I am out of space but it's fine. We also have The Clockwork Girl by Anna Mazzalola and this one is a book that I recently added to my wish list because I was really intrigued by the synopsis of it all. We are following Madeline who arrives at home of a city's celebrated clockmaker. We're in Paris in 1750 and girls are going missing and it seems like there's a lot of mystery and I feel like there's going to be a gothic element to this book. I'm just really intrigued by especially the last bit of the synopsis. It goes, soon Madeline fears that she has stumbled upon 
an even greater conspiracy, one which might reach to the very heart of the seals, an intoxicating story of obsession, illusion, and the price of freedom. And that really hooked my attention. So hoping that this will also be a good read. And then we also have a portrait of a thief by Grace D. Lee. And this one doesn't have the sticker on. This is one of the ones where the top book had the sticker on and the ones underneath didn't, but the top book was really quite in a battered condition, so I had to bring both to the till to be like, this is 50% off, please the it through. And this one is one that, again, has intrigued me. It's one where we're following Will, who plans to steal artwork that has been stolen from original countries. A lot of our museum have stolen exhibits that they display, so whether it's paintings or artifacts and things a lot of it is stolen and this book is highlighting that and we have a main character that's going around stealing them back so I I think that's going to be really interesting because is it really stealing if you're giving it back to the people that it originally belonged to which yes technically but also morally question mark um so I think this is going to be really interesting I was again these three books were all books that I was going to get in paperback, but with them being half price, it actually worked out cheaper than waiting for the paperback, so I'm fine with it. I've said loads of times that I'm not a massive hardback reader, that I prefer paperbacks, hands down, and all of this. Yeah, you know what? Ignore that comment. Ignore it, because clearly I don't mind hardbacks, because they were in a sale. I think it's just normally I would rather wait for the paperback and not pay the price of the hardback. But if there's a sale, count me there. So there we go. Those are the six books that I got, and I'm obviously excited for them because I bought them. But yeah, so that was what we ended up doing yesterday. We went to a couple more shops after that, didn't get much, and then went for a nice meal. And it was a really nice experience. They cook everything in front of you and stuff, and they make it a bit of a performance and everything, and it was enjoyable. But that's everything, and I've been talking for long enough, so I'm gonna go. I've got a little bit of editing and stuff to do as usual, and then... Like I said, probably read a bit more of Wake and Hearst and then pick up a different book for work because, yeah, I think Wake and Hearst is fine to read for like an hour at a time, but not something I want to really invest in. Anyway, right, I'm rambling. I've got to go. I'm, I'm really excited with this. Did you take advantage of the Waterstone sale or Barnes & Noble if you're in America? They also had 50% off hardbacks. So let me know how you did, if you did get anything and what you did get. I didn't get everything I wanted. I quite pleased with that because I would have spent a lot more so we're, we're happy with this pile that will do I read so much yesterday and I am genuinely shocked with how much I got read it was an amazing time though let me start off with the book I read the least of though and that's Wakenhurst I got to chapter 28 page 229 so I don't think I read loads of this one it's one of those things like I do think it's a good book it is well written it's got the atmosphere to it that's really quite dark and the additional journal entries that I spoke about already of Maud's father do really add to that atmosphere and the fact that he does seem to be unraveling since he found that picture known as doom and also the translation that he's doing on this book it just seems to be really playing onto him about something that's happened previously that he's never spoken about although I think at this point I'm kind of piecing together exactly what happened and it is interesting seeing Maud grow as her own person going against things that she's just been taught and instead learning to question things and question just because you've been told something doesn't mean that it's necessarily true and I love like that I like the development that we're going through I think the main thing for me is that it's just very very slow paced I'm not holding out anything that I'm like oh my god this is amazing at the moment and as much as I can get behind a slow paced story I have to really be invested in the characters for that and I'm not quite yet so however I started a book yesterday initially going into it I had reservations I really had high reservations it was a book that my dad bought me for Christmas well it wasn't technically for Christmas he just bought it and I've said it was Christmas because it's basically that close to Christmas beside the point but I was hesitant about this particular book and that is because he said it was funny. I like a dry humour, bit of sarcasm, bit, you know, that that's my sort of humour. And I wasn't sure how this would go. So when people tell me a book is funny, I'm automatically hesitant. Wow, was I wrong? Because this is so good. <laughs> 
This is The Stranger Times by C.K. MacDonald and I am loving this book so so much. It is so good. It's it's absurd and it's funny and I am loving it. So this is the book I read a lot of and this is the book I took to work. I wasn't expecting to read so much. It was a very chill day at work which is lovely. I don't think that's going to happen today so unfortunately I don't think I'm going to get as much read but it was lovely yesterday. And I got up to chapter 18 page 165 which I don't normally do that with one book like sit there and read like 160 pages without wanting to break it up with another book. This I didn't want to do that with. I was enjoying it so so much. Okay so let me actually tell you what this book is about. So we're following Hannah. Hannah has just broken up with her husband and she has never had a job before. She's honestly all the experiences that she's going through are very new to her because she was very affluent, very wealthy because her husband was very wealthy but now she's like nope going away from that. I don't want anything to do with him anymore. I don't want his money. I'm gonna do these things for myself. And so she ends up going for an interview at Stranger Times and she's she's desperate for a job. She has no idea what she's even applying for. What we know is that Stranger Times is a newspaper. It's a very unusual newspaper. It does news articles about UFOs and ghosts and just weird and wonderful things like that. And so she goes there. She goes for the interview. She gets the job. It's, it's chaos. It's just pure chaos. Um, and she meets her other work colleagues. There are five, well there are technically six but five that you meet at first. What I love about them is each of these characters are quirky and unique in their own ways. This lighting is going in and out clouds. Could you please not? cloud but they are they're so unique and different and it's hilarious you've got a boss that is honestly the most rude person ever like he is so rude but it's also funny it really really works I find this to be so much fun and I'm loving seeing Hannah growing into her own person. Just her development in this is really good as well. And I just, I really like her as a character. I really do. Alongside that storyline of the fact that Hannah's got this job in this newspaper place that she had no idea what she was even applying for and it being a chaotic fun time, you also have a sub plot theme going on in this and this is followed by different perspectives throughout the book. So you'll have like a chapter on Hannah or maybe like two chapters on Hannah and then you'll have a different perspective but they all revolve around this one person and he is an American. He mentioned his name once and I've since forgotten but he is an American. However he's not technically human, he is an immortal with magic and well he's not exactly rational as he says that's what torture does to you so there we go but that's really interesting as well because there are these sinister things that are happening and I cannot wait for the two parts of this to converge and I'm so excited to see how it's gonna go this is a book that is just a wild fun ride and I love it it is just so absurd and I didn't realise I needed that in a book, but I do, and this is so good. There is another book out, which is The Charming Man, and I would definitely be picking it up. I am loving this. It's just something that is so different to what I would normally read that it, it's just great. I'm loving it. It is it's amazing and I've been gushing about it for a while so I will spare you any more but this this is really good. So this is the book I'm planning to read some more of while I'm at work. I was going to start an ebook but I got so engrossed in Strange Times that I haven't done that. Whether I will or not I don't know but we're gonna see. It's just so good but for today I need to go and do some food shopping and I also need to get a passport photo done. So I applied for my passport. We're we gonna go on a tangent. I apologize. Skip ahead if you want to. I applied for my passport well it's a renewal and they said you could just upload a photo so I did that and then they rejected it because of bad lighting. We did it again and they've rejected it again for bad lighting so I was like you know what enough's enough I'm just going to go to a photo booth and get this done. There's a photo booth at work so I thought I'm going to sort that out yesterday. It's not working. So then I was looking online for like where can I go for a photo booth? I need to get this done and apparently there's one in my local Tesco but I haven't seen it before so it could be that I've just never paid attention to it or not but Hopefully we're gonna get my passport photo done and my food shopping done. So that's what we're hoping for and if I can't get it done then I'm gonna be... We're gonna have to try and find one because why? <laughs> Anyway, right, okay, I'm gonna go. My brother's playing with his Nerf gun, so if you can hear that, that's what that sound is. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. And uh, yeah, if you haven't picked this up and you need a fun, absurd book, do it. It's good fun.
Hello, good morning. I have quite a bit of a Regent update and also just a fun update that I'm excited about. I've also realised I don't have any rings on but I can't bother to go up and actually get any on. Like, I'm still in my pyjamas. I put on a nice pink jumper for you. It's like almost 10 o'clock in the morning and I'm tired and I just, I can't be bothered. But it's fine. Okay, let's go with reading first. So, I read a little bit of Wakenhurst and I mean a little bit. I actually just stopped in the middle of a page, which I don't often do, but you know what? It was just, it was happening. I wasn't feeling it. I don't know which one. Oh no, I'm on this page. So I'm on 249. So I think yeah, I didn't read much at all. We have learned the sin that her father committed, which was exactly what I thought it was going to be. And as I say, like, this isn't a bad book by any means. It's just not gripping me. I, I am planning to get it finished this week. I want to finish it before New Year's Day because I don't want to go into the new year with this book, to be honest. The other book that I'm reading is way better than okay. I am loving this book. And I read another huge chunk of this book that I wasn't expecting to read because I thought it would be busier to yesterday and it wasn't busier, it was very chill and it's meant to be very chill for the rest of the week so I am very excited so I got a lot read and I'm now up to chapter 37 page 310. I am flying through this book. I only have just over 100 pages left, like maybe 106 pages left and yeah that's gonna get finished today this is so much fun. It is so good. So as I said, the two plot lines, they are finally coming together. We're seeing the, how that all's combining and there are so many creatures and things in this which are just so fun. It's entertaining. It's gripping. I can't, I don't want to put it down. It is so good. And on the cover, you have lots of like little figures and stuff. And this is actually little spoilers for things that's happening in the book. So I've had great fun working that out because I just think it was, it was great. I've loved it. I want to get the next book so much. I am really, really enjoying this. I gushed by it a lot yesterday, but it's just, it's so good. It's so fun. It's so ridiculous. And I love it so much. Like, I've never seen anyone talk about this book. And maybe I'm just looking in the wrong places, but please let me know if you've read this book or not. And if you haven't and you need something that's gonna make you laugh, pick it up it's good, it's fun, it's ridiculous. Please don't go into it expecting it all to make sense and to be like, oh, of course this is believable. It's not that. But if you want fun, this is fun. So that's the reading updates. Look at that, only three minutes. That was pretty good. What actually happened at work that's got me very excited and is also half the reason why I'm tired. I started thinking about my Animal Crossing yesterday. For those of you that don't know, I fell in love with Animal Crossing earlier this year and I took a deep dive into it at the beginning of the year and then I kind of like faded off. Then I restarted my island and then got to a certain point and then faded off again. And I've been feeling like picking it back up, but I have been debating whether I wanted to carry on from what I've done or whether just to restart. And in the end, I decided yesterday I'm gonna restart. And I had an island name set and ready to go because it was just gonna be a fun, silly time. I ended up going with Barbie Vale because there's a whole new Barbie film coming out and I'm gonna be taking my partner to see it in July and he is so not happy with it. So Barbie Vale was just like a fun, jokey name. And when I told my partner, he was like, oh Lord, why? And it was just funny. So I was like, that's what the island's gonna be. That is gonna be fun. I'm just gonna have a casual time. I'm not gonna like speed run it, which I did with my second island where I was like changing the dates and stuff so I could get through it all a lot quicker. Like I'm not gonna do that this time. I'm gonna have a proper chill. And I was like, but I'm probably gonna have to restart my island like loads because I want to make sure I start with at least one villager that I'm happy with, that I want to keep. If you don't know Animal Crossing, this is gonna make no sense to you and I apologize. So I was there. I was on my third restart and I was like, ah, I'm not gonna keep it. This was last night, by the way, hence the tiredness. I was like, I'm not gonna keep this island most likely because I doubt it's gonna be any of the villagers that I want and stuff. And so I'm just gonna do it for a laugh. I'm gonna make my character Wednesday Adams. It turns out that the island is what I wanted and we did have a starting cat villager that I wanted as well, which is Renee and she's very fabulous. Yeah, so now I'm stuck as Wednesday Adams in Barbie Vale. I've come up with a whole backstory and everything and it's going to be Wednesday Adams is stuck on this island and it's a nightmare for her and she's trying to escape and so she's going to have this one corner of the island that's hers where her house is and it'll be all the gothic-y Adams family vibe and then the rest of the island is going to be all this pink cutesiness that she is just terrified and it's like torture to be around. That's what we're going with. My partner thought it was hilarious, I think it's amazing and yeah that's now what my island is. We have Wednesday Adams that is stuck in her nightmare, which is Barbie Vale Island. There we go. Did any of that make sense to you? Do you play Animal Crossing? 
if it didn't then I'm sorry but it's going to be a fun time and so I'm going to be continuing on with that today. I was planning to like start editing this vlog and stuff but you know what I've got Sunday off, I'm not seeing my partner, I can do all the editing and stuff then. So this morning I have just under an hour so I'm going to play a bit of this, then do some cooking and get myself ready for work and while I'm eating my lunch I will read a bit more of Wakenhurst. So I am thinking that if it all goes to plan and I finish Stranger Times today then tomorrow I will bring Wakenhurst to work and try and get this finished because I want to get them both finished. I just I want to be able to come to you on Sunday and be like I finished both these books, they were amazing, finish the vlog, start a new one with the brand new books to start the new year. That's the plan. So that's the way it's going to go but alongside that we're also going to be playing Animal Crossing because it's Animal Crossing. So yeah that was this weirdly chaotic update. I hope you're all doing well and yeah let me know. Animal Crossing? Yes? No? I don't know. I, I enjoy it. It's just cosy fun. Okay, I'm gonna actually get back to doing my island because it's fun. I've had a chill couple of days actually so I did finish The Strange Times and I loved this book. I think we all knew that I was going to love it. Definitely want to get the second book The Charming Man that's not actually out yet so it seems like that this was all just published ebook versions and now it's being published physically. I'm really excited I can't wait for that second book. It's just a fun chill time to something that's a complete different change to something I've ever read before and if you need something that's a bit ridiculous, a bit of a palette cleanser that's fun and gripping and yeah this is the one to go for. I really really enjoyed it. It all worked really well. I loved it. I just yeah had a great time. There were moments in this where I literally laughed out loud because I found it so funny. I wish I kind of tapped those moments because they were just so good. I definitely want to annotate this one when I reread it. It's it's just a fun time and I wasn't expecting it. So this was definitely a lovely book to finish the year on. Although technically I didn't finish the year on that book. I didn't finish Wakenhurst. I kind of gave up on it to be honest. I got to page 289 and I just I really wasn't feeling it. I think I'd like a hundred pages left to go and I did take this into work yesterday fully thinking that I was going to finish it but I just every time I was picking it up I was just like I'm just not into this and as much as I didn't want to bring a book into the new year to read at the end of the day I'm just not going to. Is it a bit of a shame I ended 2022 on DNF? Maybe but at the same time like why am I going to force myself to read a book that I know is just going to be okay? I can understand why some people love this book but for me it was just so slow and I just could not connect to the characters and I just didn't really care what was going on so yeah that was a DNF which is not great. I think it's really contrasting how I finished the year off like with a book that I absolutely adored and didn't expect to and then a book that I really thought I would like and then couldn't bring myself to finish it. Very interesting but there we go. Oh and uh, yesterday as a result all I did was play Animal Crossing. The island is going well. It's kind of killing me to do it as like not jumping ahead with the days but also it's really fun just to relax on it so definitely going to be carrying on with that. It's been it's been great. I love it so much. I'm glad I'm back in my Animal Crossing era. It's just it's a fun relaxing game and that's all I really needed. But that's it for this update and this vlog actually, kind of a quick wrap up. Like I said at the start of this vlog I hope you had a lovely New Year's. I spent mine sleeping because I'd finished work and I was exhausted. It'd been raining all day yesterday and I went straight home to bed. So it was great. <laughs> but yeah, 
no I hope you had a lovely one and thanks so much for everything this year like it's been so great so thank you so much for being part of this community and everything and I hope 2023 is great for you but yeah okay I'm on a ramble so we're gonna cut it short here if you've made it this far then let's put a party emoji the emoji with the party hat and blood the party popper let's do that emoji i'm gonna go so thank you so much for watching if you have enjoyed it please do give it that thumbs up subscribe and comment those three things really help the channel out as always social media links will be linked below and i will catch you in the next one mm -hmm.